G'day guys, uh, thanks for joining me in another episode. Out here on the same lake I was at a couple of weeks ago, probably about a month or two ago. Uh, I really liked that trip, so I figured I'd come back and do two nights this time. So that way it gives me a good chance to sort of get camp set up properly and go for a good fish tomorrow. So yeah, it should be a good weekend. Now this, yeah, this weather's a little bit all over the shop today. Um, we're sort of in the first week of April, so almost halfway through autumn. So it should be quite nice weather, but yeah, just can't seem to make up its mind. Sort of sunny, then cloudy, and then sunny again. But yeah, it seems like these clouds are kind of rolled in, and I kind of think it might even rain a little bit later on, so probably don't want to dilly-dally too much. It's already about three o'clock. It took me a little bit of, um, yeah, longer to get down here than I thought, so yeah, might just uh, quickly try and find a good campsite to get set up, and then, yeah, go from there. So let's see what we can find. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Have a look at this guy. Such a cool little dude. Let's see if I can pick him up. <laughs> Come here. Man, this guy's so cool. How nice are his markings? I think it's a blue tongue lizard. Could be wrong, but it looks like a blue tongue. <laughs> Alright buddy, I'll put you back. No, no, not towards the canoe. Wrong direction. Yeah, so I just pulled the canoe up. It's actually not a bad spot around here, eh? Seems to be lots of gaps between the trees to be able to set up a shelter, which is good. And the view, not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, but the only thing, there seems to be so many mozzies and flies around here. I'm getting absolutely hammered, eh? So yeah, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if like the whole place is going to be like this or, or just here, but man, there's so many, absolutely everywhere. Anyway, I'll give you a little quick look around. Yeah, so as you can see, a fair bit of room to sort of set up a shelter. Really nice backdrop too. All the burrowings and the spotted gums. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, you could do something around here I reckon. Well there's another spot just over there that I'll go show you. Yeah, it's also back here. Fair bit of room to set up a shelter. Amongst all the casserinas and the she-oaks. Actually for those who don't know, this is what a she-oak is. Or a casserina. It's probably the closest thing to a conifer that we have in Australia. It's got these needly leaves. So it usually makes it quite comfortable to camp on because it's nice and soft. Whereas gum trees, <laughs> that's usually what it looks like. So it's quite crunchy. So soft, crunchy. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so a fair bit of room back here too. Spoil it for choice. Yeah, nice gully back there. Could explore that tomorrow. I've had a little bit more of a scout around, but I think that first spot that I saw back there, I think that's probably the, the winner. So I might um yeah turn around and go back there. Lots of fresh kangaroo scat lying around everywhere, so there's a good possibility that I'm going to be woken up by a screaming kangaroo in the middle of the night again. <laughs> yeah, so just thinking out loud, I could either camp up here amongst the gum trees and the burrowings, which could be pretty cool. You also get a really cool view of the lake from up here. Um, or I camp down sort of in that little gully there, which also would be really nice. Um, but though it is a little bit damp down there, so that's why I'm not quite sure. But it is pretty cool looking out over the lake down there. There's just so many mosquitoes and flies up here. Um, I don't think I'm gonna, really going to be able to escape them wherever I camp, to be honest. So yeah, hmm, decisions. Yeah, so I think I might actually camp in this little gully down here. Uh, surprisingly, when I was up on that hill, 
even though as nice as it is, I was getting absolutely hammered by mosquitoes and flies. Um, I would have thought there'd actually be more mosquitoes down here, but up there was pretty nasty. So it's not too bad down here. There's still a fair few, um, but yeah. So I think I'll probably set up just behind me here in this nice little flat area. Then I get to wake up to that view in the morning. So I think it should be nice. Yeah, so being in the canoe, I sort of had the luxury of bringing a few different kind of sleeping systems this time. So I have like the hammock, I've got my tarp, um, I've got my inflatable mat and I've got my brand new bivy so I haven't used it yet so I'm thinking I might use the bivy hey because I didn't bring the um, bug net with my hammock so I didn't actually expect it to be this many mosquitoes around. It's kind of strange to have this many mosquitoes this time of year but so yeah I don't really have that so I think if I was to hammock I'd probably get pretty hammered so I'm thinking I might use the bivy um, and it might maybe sort of set up a little Adirondack shelter using the tarp just over the top of me so I think that should do. Yeah so I've just got my DD hammock 3x3 three three meter tarp got my ground sheet that I just got off online off uh, some Australian army surplus store. And then my new baby. This is an outdoor research helium bivy. I know bivies can be a pretty um, sort of divisive topic. So you either love them or hate them, but yeah, pretty keen to give it a go. I think for the kind of camping I do, I think it'll probably come in pretty handy. Uh, especially when you don't want to lug around a tent. You just kind of want a quick shelter just to chuck up. Um, yeah, I think it'll be pretty good, but Time will tell. We'll see how we feel tomorrow morning. <laughs> anyway, let's get that set up. All right, well the shelter I'm gonna try and make, I've never made before, so. Yeah, cut me some slack here. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I'm actually not quite sure if it's um, got a name or what the name is, but I saw a photo of it on um, some Instagram somewhere, so I thought I might give it a go. Yeah, so I think that's kind of the main gist of it. So you've got to get a support post to hold that up, and another one for there.
All right, finally, all done. Pretty cool design. A little bit fiddling around, but um, now that I've kind of done it once, I think I should be able to do it a little bit quicker next time. It's got a really nice awning out the front, which is good. And it's got a nice side wall, so if the wind's coming from a certain direction, that would be pretty beneficial. There's a fair bit of room on the inside as well. And the good thing about this design is you get a, a ground sheet as well. Yeah, I don't know how it'd hold up if it was pretty strong winds, but a day like today where it's pretty calm, maybe a slight drizzle, I think it'd handle it pretty well. And yeah, I've just tied out the back just to give a little bit more room inside. But yeah, I think it's out pretty well, considering it's my first go. I won't put the bivy and the, the inflatable mat down just yet. I'll do that just before I go to sleep, just to avoid any sort of nasty skin in the bivy or any sparks flying onto the, onto the mat. I think it's time for a beer. I'll just clear a little area for the fire later. At least I don't have to go very far to get firewood. There's so much around here. A lovely still night. Now, it's been a very long day but this beer is going down an absolute treat. Happy Friday guys. Cheers. See that sunset. So every time I'm here, it absolutely turns it on. That is stunning. We're just about to light the fire, but I can't get away from that. Absolutely beautiful. Back here. Just break it up a bit just to expose some of those fibers. Alright, beer time. So, you saw me drinking this one earlier on. This is a Filter XBA. Absolutely love this beer at the moment. It's probably my favourite beer. I think I probably showed you guys in one of my recent videos this one, but yeah, I can't talk highly enough of it. Such a tasty beer. I was actually listening to uh, ABC Radio the other day. They actually had a lady, so they actually had the lady that owns this company. 
Um, really interesting conversation. Apparently she was the first uh, female brewer in Australia, I'm pretty sure. And uh, that was about 16 years ago. She used to work in WA and then she came across to Sydney and started up her own brewery company a couple, I think, pretty recently, within the last couple of years. Um, yeah, and it's just started to take off and it's really, really nice beer. So, yeah, it's definitely worth hunting it down if you can find it. Uh, and what else have we got in here? So, got something a little bit special in here. So if you can see it or not, but yeah, Young Henry's Winter Hop Ale. Um, let me, yeah, let me just do a little close up of the label so you can see it a bit clearer. Yes, yeah, so this one's a bit of a special one to me. Uh, if you guys watched my other videos before, you'll notice I've um, yeah talked about Young Henry's a lot before. That's because I'm an illustrator by trade, and I actually uh, do a lot of illustration work for these guys. So I actually designed this label as well as their Summer Hop Ale. Uh, unfortunately, you can't buy this one anymore. They stopped making it about a year or so ago. This one I've sort of had sitting in the fridge, um, yeah, sort of waiting for a special occasion. But the summer hop ale you can still buy. So if you go to Dan Murphy's or any bottle ale like that, you should be able to pick up the yeah the summer hop ale, which is definitely worth tracking down if um, you're into your craft beers because yeah they're a really really good drop. And I'm not even just saying that because I do work for them. They're actually really nice beers. Um, but yeah, so I've sort of been saving this one for a bit of a special occasion. And I figured uh, yeah this trip pretty much uh, sums it up in one one image. So. Yeah, better excuse than any to have at this trip, so let's crack it open. So I just got my new Olsen Goods Titanium Double Wood Mug. Great little piece of kit, this thing. Keeps your cold things colder and your warm things warmer. Still smells good. I think it's time to get some grub on now. Getting pretty hungry and uh, got a pretty decent bed of coals there. So tonight I've got uh, kangaroo bangers, so kangaroo sausages, which I haven't had for ages. I always have kangaroo steak, but I thought this time I might bring out the sausages and give them a go. Yeah, anyway, let's get that on. Yeah, it's a bit of a big pan this time. It's what I usually take when I go car camping and things like that. I figured since I've got the canoe, I can afford to take a few extra luxuries. I feel like I pretty much bought everything except the kitchen sink this time though. Alright, I think that is about done. Yeah, so I decided to make a bit of a sausage sandwich tonight. Never really take bread into the bush. Always tends to go stale really quickly. Which this is... <laughs> this one's started to go pretty stale now. If you guys have a good uh, tip on keeping bread fresh, let us know. I do like my bread. First off, I'm going to put in some coleslaw mix. Get some of that onion goodness in there. Those people out there who don't like onion, absolutely crazy. We'll never understand it. Oh, just looks so good. And we'll get, get one of the kanga bangers. Chuck that in. I've got this uh this sauce. So this is called Outback Spirit. 
Uh, you can get it at like Coles and Woolies and stuff like that. Really good, um, yeah, barbecue sauce. It's actually made with some native ingredients. Like this one's got mountain pepper, which is from South Gippsland in Victoria and Tasmania. Uh, and also like, uh, I think it's like a portion of the proceeds or the profits go to helping sort of Aboriginal communities and things like that. So um, yeah, I think it's a really good brand to support. So yeah, chuck it down. And after a long day, that looks absolutely delicious. Oh yeah. A beer and a sausage sanger. Oh. <laughs> a beer and a sausage sanger. Cannot complain. Oh yeah, that is so, so good. Really liking this place, so hey? glad I came back here. Absolute beautiful country. I was going to go to a different lake to, um, this weekend, but it didn't quite work out. Um, yeah, so decided to come here instead, and always pays off. So really like it here. Definitely going to keep coming back. So I haven't really sort of been putting out too many, um, yeah, consistent videos. It's kind of hard to find the time. I seem to only sort of be able to get one video out a month, which I'd like to do more, but life just keeps getting in the way. Eh? <laughs> it's a bit of a pain. I'd like to sort of go camping every two weeks if I could. I feel like that would be a good be a good amount of videos and things like that, but it's just so much on. This time of year there's just constantly something on each weekend, whether it's a mate's birthday or a, just, I don't know, anything. But anyway, it's nice to get out done um, this weekend. Actually something uh, pretty yeah, pretty big happened the other weekend. Finally, um, after nine years I finally proposed to my girlfriend, so yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty exciting. She's a very patient girl to wait that long, but yeah, we we really um we really wanted to get the house uh, buy the house last year. That was our sort of big priority. So we put all our effort into that, and then figured uh, once I ticked that box, I figured I ticked the next box. So yeah, two weeks ago we came down the coast on a little camping trip and went to a bunch of the the vineyards and stuff down here, which she's always wanted to do. And then um yeah, went to our favourite camping place and yeah, just sort of uh, surprised her. <laughs> so, got down on the knee which is um yeah pretty cool so the reason we're actually I'm down here this weekend is because on Sunday I'm actually meeting her uh, not too far from here actually um, we're actually going to go look at a wedding reception place um, a beautiful farm so yeah we're thinking about having it there so we're going to go check that out on Sunday and see see what it's like and if we like it then we'll book it in for next year sometime but yeah exciting times um, seem to be ticking all the right boxes so Anyway, I'm um, just going to finish off this and enjoy the fire. It's been a pretty long day. It's a long drive and then, yeah, a lot of mucking around to sort of get here and get this set up and stuff. So I'm pretty exhausted. So pretty keen just to sit back and actually enjoy the fire and stop filming because filming sure takes, um, takes it out of you. So, yeah, put on some tunes, pour myself a gin pretty soon and, uh, yeah, just relax. So, anyway, guys, um, I'll see you in the morning. Hopefully we can get some good fish tomorrow. So, fingers crossed. Anyway, chat to you guys in the morning.
guys. Uh, woke up to another lovely still morning this morning. Looks so nice out there on the water, eh? But yeah, first things first, let's get the fire going and get some brekkie on. Turkish bread in here. Get that out. Look at all the oil. <laughs> Turn the bag, see it through. This goes to show you how good they are for you. Just gonna cut that in half. I'll save the other half for tomorrow. I just want to lightly toast it, I don't want to taste it too much. I can I'll probably do actually. So I've just got some pesto in this little container. Just smear some of that on the bread. And then get the mushrooms, put them on top. Now I've just got some goat's cheese wrapped up here. Like I said, the luxuries of um, canoe camping means I can bring in a little esky with some a nice cooler just to keep things cold. Otherwise I don't know how much I'd trust um, hiking this into the bush. <laughs> Now if you're at home, you could add some rocket to the top of that, maybe some balsamic glaze. You could even add like a, a poached egg, but yeah, looks pretty good to me. Just gonna make myself a, a hot chocolate, but actually a cold chocolate. So I don't actually really feel like anything warm this morning, so in terms of a drink. So I figure I'd just, yeah, just add it straight to the water rather than boiling the water. Okay, breakfast of champions. That is such a nice breakfast though. So simple, but so tasty.
the sun's just started to poke out now, so it should be a pretty nice day, I reckon. I think it's meant to get to around sort of the 26 degree mark today, so yeah, it'd be pretty nice. Uh, last night sleeping was, um, yeah, not too bad, eh? Um, I decided not to use the bivy, just because when by the time I was going to bed, mosquitoes weren't too bad. There's just still a few here and there, but I don't know, I kind of like sort of sleeping out amongst nature. And I feel like if I was to sleep in a bivy, I'd feel pretty, uh, yeah, separate from nature. So, yeah, but it seemed to work well. I had a few mosquitoes through the night sort of like bug, um, bugging me, but I don't know, kind of just, um, I had some Aragard with me this time, which was some very glad that I bought because otherwise it probably would have been pretty painful last night. So I just kept putting that on throughout, throughout the night. It seemed to work fine. So I was still sort of buzzing around me, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, temperature wise, it was absolutely lovely last night. It was so comfortable and warm. Um, yeah, really, really like the shelter. You feel so nestled and uh, yeah, comfortable inside it. Like there's such a big awning coming out for me. Um, I think it might've like drizzled maybe slightly during the night because everything's a little bit wet. So but it kept me some, yeah, nice and um, dry, so that's good. Definitely gonna, yeah, continue to use this kind of shelter. I'm not quite sure what it's called, so if you guys know what it's called, let us know. I just remember seeing a photo of it, so I thought I'd give it a go, and it worked out quite well. Kind of takes up a pretty decent sized floor, floor plan, though, so it's, you kind of got to have a, a fair bit of space around you to be able to use it, but yeah, looks pretty cool, though. Yeah, so compared to last time when I'm pretty sure I heard a yowie running through the bush, um, yeah, didn't sort of hear anything too strange last night. I did wake up a few times to the kangaroos sort of um, walking around the edges. It's funny how even to sleep, your ears just perk up straight away. As soon as you hear something out of the ordinary, you just wake up straight away. So it's, and being the Aussie bush, being so crunchy, nothing can really creep up on you, so, which is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, woke up a few times to a few weird sounds, but nothing too crazy, so yeah. But yeah, it was a really nice night, so quite happy with it. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll finish off my breakfast and sort of get, cat, um, yeah, just tied up around camp and then I'll go for a little wander around, have a look around the gully, see if I can find any edible um, plants or any bush tucker like that. Could be in luck, maybe some native grapes or something. It's this time of year um, during season, so maybe I'll go have a wander and see if I can find anything. Then after that, I'll probably yeah, chuck the canoe in and go for a bit of a paddle and go for a bit of a fish and hopefully we can catch something for dinner. So anyway, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. Gotcha. Yeah, so this is the other way I was thinking you could have the shelter. So what I've done, if we come around here, so I've taken the support post, which was, which was on that corner and just moved it back a rung. And then I've just guide, here, yeah, guy rope that out and then guy rope that out. And so, yeah, you get a, you get a lot more headspace inside now, I find. You do lose a little bit of the awning. It doesn't come out quite as far, but you still get a fair, Fair decent coverage. Yeah, so he's still um yeah, he's still pretty covered, so it's not a bad way to have it I reckon. I might actually keep it like this for tonight. Considering I did it the other way last night, I might give this one a go. Yeah, so for those of you wondering what kind of knife I use, uh, this one I got custom made by a bloke named Gidgey. Well, his name's Scotty Simmons, and he's based out of Northern Queensland, but he goes by the name of Gidgey Knives. Uh, really, really nice knife. Absolutely love this. It fits in the hand so comfortably. Uh, I think uh, the, yeah, the timber scale is made of lancewood, and it's a carbon steel with a patina blade, uh, Scandi grind as well. And it's just so comfortable in the hand. I find some bushcraft knives can have a pretty thick um, handle, but yeah, this one sits in the hand really nice. So if you're in the market for one, Definitely check him out because he makes some really nice knives. He also made this sheath for me as well. Um, 
yeah, just a little fire steel holder. But I made the fire steel myself about a year or two ago. But yeah, it's a really nice sheath as well. So yeah, definitely um, worth checking them out if you're in the market for a knife. A uh, nice local guy, so yeah. But being uh, right next to a saltwater lake, just do some knife maintenance. I've just got some olive oil in this little container here. So I'm just gonna smear it over the blade just to protect it from that salt because being a carbon steel, it will rust. So yeah, really, really nice knife. Definitely worth checking him out. Yeah, so I didn't really have to go very far to find some bush tucker. Literally right behind where we've got the camp set up. We've got some native grapes, which I thought there might be some native grapes around here. So anyway, let's take a closer look. Yeah, so here we've got a five leaf native grape. So if you take a look at the leaves, you can see they they group in, in five, and then we've got um, the grapes here. So Australia has a few species of native grapes, but not all are edible, so make sure you do your research before you go nibbling on any. But these certainly are, so let's um, pick one off and um, yeah, I'll do a close-up of it. Yeah, so we just break it open. They've generally got about two seeds, sometimes three seeds, sometimes one, but generally about two. So just pick them out, and yeah, that's the flesh inside. Really great bit of bush tucker, this one. Though, things to note, um, with Australian grapes, sometimes they can be a little bit astringent, so if you eat sort of too many of them, they can sort of irritate your throat a little bit, but just a handful here and there, no, there's no problem with that. But yeah, they're, they're quite tasty. Great little bit of bush tucker. Yeah, so another little useful thing to know about the native grapevine is that it's a good source of water. So if you're running low of water, you can actually chop this up into sections and then blow through the vine and you'll get water coming out the other end. So yeah, nice little handy tip. And check out the size of this old girl. She is huge. And she's a monster. Just to think tiny little ants made this. It's pretty incredible. I've actually seen ones uh, that sort of been hollowed out, like abandoned termite mounds, uh, where there's sort of been holes in the side, and you can knock off the top. And you pretty much got yourself like a bush oven. Cook up some bush pizza. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Man, look at the size of this burrowing. She is huge. I've never seen one with a trunk this size. It's such a slow growing plant, so she must be ancient. Man, how cool is the little ecosystem it supports? Plants growing on top of plants. So cool. Yeah, so what we've got here is a golden orb spider. And although they look pretty gnarly, they're not particularly venomous to humans, which is good. Because these guys always have a habit of setting up camp right at about head height. So when you're sort of walking off track, you're constantly running into these guys. Which is, so it's always good to carry a stick just to yeah, try and clear the path in front of you. But yeah, they're a really interesting spider. Um, so their web, so obviously it's a golden web and that's how they get the name, the golden orb spider. Uh, it's actually one of the strongest material, like natural materials you can find in the bush. It's incredibly strong. And uh, from what I've read online, the certain Aborigines, sort of like the medicine men, like the clever men or the Kradjis, 
They used to be able to stitch up wounds uh, using this web, which I find is pretty incredible. But um, yeah, pretty spectacular spider. I just wish they didn't always set up camp at head height. <laughs> And how nice is the view from up here? Such a lovely day. It's making me pretty keen to get out there on the canoe. I think I might go back and have some lunch and then get it out there. So I've just got some biltong for lunch today. I've got a ricer and um, a rice and tuna thing, but didn't really feel like it, so I figured I'd just uh, yeah, eat this for lunch. This is a local leg leg sorry. This is a local legends build song. You can buy it from um, like Coles and Woolies and things like that. It's pretty nice, eh? For a shop bought um, build song, it's really nice. But there definitely is better out there. Like if you go to sort of the more boutiquey build song companies, there's some really nice build song. I find it's a lot better than jerky. I find jerky to be a bit too sweet, and whereas this is just yeah, deliciousness. Anyway, I bought two books out here that I wanted to show you guys. Because um, I always get asked by people sort of for some book recommendations. And so I thought I'd bring these two out and show you. So firstly, we've got Wild Food Plants of Australia by Tim Lowe. This is the Bible when it comes to bush tucker in Australia. It's a really, really insightful book. It's got pictures, it's got diagrams of Australia and whereabouts it grows. And it talks all about um, yeah, the season and the, the, t like in the characteristics of the plant. So it's really, really useful. So if you want to get into bush tucker, which I highly recommend you should, because um, yeah, it wasn't until I sort of started getting into bush tucker that I started to look at the plants, um, like the Aussie bush in a, a new light. I think before that, you kind of just look at the bush as like just a bunch of trees. But when you really start to, yeah, so start to appreciate plants, like the individual plants and their uses, and um, yeah, you really sort of start to look at the bush in a new light. And that's, that's kind of what I found. I found out once I started to learn about the bush and what plants I can use for different things and what I can eat, you really start to form a, a new connection to the bush and I think it's a pretty important thing. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend hunting this down if you want to get into that kind of stuff. So yeah. And the second book I got with me, which um, I'm almost finished reading, that's the, Aborig sorry, the Aborigines of the Sydney District by Peter Turbot. Um, so interestingly enough, this is actually one of my good friend's dad, he wrote this book. Um, it's, but it's actually a really, really interesting book. So I, I'm sure if you've watched my channel, you probably know that I'm pretty interested in um, yeah, Aborigines of Australia. And yeah, I think it's a fascinating culture. There's a lot to learn from them. They're pretty much the, yeah, like the original bushcrafters. So I figured if you want to learn how to, to bushcraft in the Aussie bush, then you should read up as much as you can about the Aborigines because they've been doing it for 50, 60,000 years, so yeah, there's a lot to learn from him. And unfortunately, especially around the Sydney district, uh, a lot of that information was lost when the early settlers came, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but the few bits and pieces that were documented and that have been passed down through certain families and stuff, um, there is still knowledge out there to learn. But depending on what part of the country you're from, there's obviously up in Northern Territory and things like that, there's still a very big, strong Aboriginal communities around that area, which is great. And so you can pretty much go actually go get it firsthand. But yeah, when it comes to sort of the Sydney district, unfortunately, um, a lot of the Aborigines were wiped out through sort of war or diseases and things like that. So we've got books like this that still um, yeah carry on their their legacy. Um, but it's really interesting. So I mean, I might grab the camera and sort of flick through them quickly and just show you sort of what it looks like inside. But yeah, these two books definitely recommend um, hunting down. I find they're a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, so Wild Food Plants of Australia by Tim Lowe. So we just open it up, you can see, yeah, so it's got some a nice big pictures. Um, and then it's also got, yeah, a diagram of Australia and sort of shows you whereabouts it grows in Australia, whether it's sort of along the coast or whether it's inland. Um, it's also got other names like that the plant might go by. Then it's got the field notes where it sort of talks about um, des describing the plant and the different characteristics of it. And then it's got its uses sort of, uh, yeah, what you can use it for and yeah, what part of the plant might be edible, things like that. So really useful. 
a really useful book. Um, and I've also just sort of written little bits of extra information that I might have come across on the internet. Because obviously it doesn't contain all the knowledge, but it contains a, a hell of a lot. So, but yeah, you might find different things. So I just write them down or I've even got a bit of piece of paper where different plants that I've read up about, I sort of write, write up about. Um, yeah, and then the next book. Yeah, and then we've got the Aborigines of the Sydney District before 1788 by Peter Turbot. Such a wealth of knowledge, this book. Um, so it's got like yeah, uh, little drawings and diagrams and yeah, pictures, paintings, yeah, different tools and things like that. Um, so it's also got a, a map of the Sydney region, sort of goes through the, the different countries that were there. So you've got the Darwals down the south and the Darwigs out towards the mountains. Um, the Wongol and the Karagals there, that's basically the Sydney Harbour region. Then Eora is the name given to classify the whole region. But yeah, I think it's a really worthwhile noting uh, sort of the Aboriginal country that you might live on. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a good thing to just remember, just pay sort of pay respects to the original inhabitant inhabitants of the land. Um, I think it's something that we shouldn't forget. And then if we go through, yeah, so it's just got different. So obviously, even though that's just the Sydney district. Um, Basically, they all spoke a different language because they basically they their own country. Uh, Australia was made up of hundreds of Aboriginal countries, and then so it's kind of hard to classify them all as one single people because they're not. They're lots and lots of different cultures. So it's got talks about the languages, and then uh, what else has it got? Yeah, so then about the tools and things like that. Um, yeah, different like different kind of yeah food fishing things like that so yeah also talking about this um this site sorry the society structures and things like that is really interesting they've got a very complex uh society structure and this is oh, especially reading about this this is uh yeah initiation ceremonies that's fascinating uh so basically when the young boy would go into manhood they go through an initiation ceremony and um yeah it's sort of had to go through different stages and yeah in the Sydney region that's to <laughs> that's to knock out their front tooth which would have been pretty painful and the females actually used to because they were the females were actually the fishermen and so they used to have to uh, they chopped off their pinky which is pretty incredible um but yeah just different cultures do different things uh the clever men or the karajis that they're really fascinating too so they're like the medicine men um yeah very interesting people so anyway, lots of yeah, lots of information in here. Really, really um, great wealth of knowledge. This book. So yeah, if you're into this kind of stuff, which I reckon you should recommend, you should start getting into because there's so much to learn from these guys. Um, yeah, definitely check this out. Look what we got here. Nice little goanna doing its best impersonation of a tree. Such a cool little dude.
started to pick up a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't get too much stronger. Sorry, Sunny. I forgot to bring my hat, so I'm just gonna have to cop it today, unfortunately. Still a lovely day to be out in the water though. I'm just gonna drift down here and test my luck. Yeah, not really having much luck, eh? Been fishing for about half an hour. No bites yet. Hmm. Such a nice afternoon on the water, though. Absolutely glorious. I can't really complain. Got some pretty big storm clouds in the distance. It was predicted to maybe storm a bit later, so I'm hoping it doesn't. <laughs> I don't want to repeat of last time, but yeah, looking a bit threatening. Yeah, I think there might be a storm coming. Looks like something's brewing. That wind's just picked up a little bit as well. It feels like it kind of changed in temperature a bit too, so. Interesting to see how the salvo plays out. It's actually the last day of, um, of daylight savings today, so I'm trying to make the most of the long day. I think sun sets at about quarter to seven, and the summer will be officially over. I'm seeing lots of little commotion, like lots of little bait fish swimming around everywhere, so you think that'd mean something's big as chasing it. Yeah, I'm just using the squidgy, the grub at the moment, so I'm thinking that there'd be flathead and stuff around here, but I mean, if you guys know any better, give me some tips because I'm a shocking fisherman. All right, well, no luck there, so I'll go try over here for a little bit. It's just not my day, hey. Not having any luck. Saw a big branch fall down out of a tree before. So I saw I heard one last night as well. It's kind of um <laughs> pretty sketchy when you see him fall or hear him fall at least. Just goes to show you really gotta be careful about the the spot you choose to camp under. Dead set, another branch just fell. I'm not even joking. <laughs> How's the timing? We should bought a beer out here. It's a lovely afternoon for a beer. To be honest, if the fishing uh, keeps staying the way it is, I might be going back pretty soon. <laughs>
Yeah, so I've just come across some native sand fire growing on top of this uh, sandbar here. Uh, we just pick out some of the fresher, greener ones. They tend to go sort of reddish, purplish coming into winter, but yeah, the green ones are nice and fresh. She just eat it raw. Might take it back and use it for dinner tonight. Yeah, so we just pick some of these greener ones. Get a few of those. I'll just get a little handful of those, take them back, and I'll put them in for dinner. Yeah, this whole sand by here is just covered in sand fire. All right, I think it's time we head back now. The sun's starting to get pretty low. We don't have too long till sunset. Just got to try and collect some firewood and stuff as well. Shame I couldn't catch any fish. Uh, gave it a good crack though. I was out here probably for about an hour, hour and a half or maybe even two hours. Just couldn't get any bites. Seems to be the story of my life, doesn't it? Still such a lovely afternoon on the water. Absolutely beautiful. This time of day is so good. It would be nice to have a beer with me out here, but... Oh well. Alright, let's go back.
All right, so this wind has really picked up, eh? So I've used the canoe just to create a bit of a, a wind block. It's working okay, not the best, but um, I'm just gonna quickly try and cook dinner and then basically call it quits because it's getting pretty windy. So I'm hoping it will die down soon, but at the moment it's it's pretty windy and uh, it's blowing straight into straight into the fire and then straight into my um into my shelter. So yeah, we might have to make some adjustments. We'll see. But anyway, let's get this on. So I've just got some cauliflower. Yeah, so I've just got the cauliflower. Just chopped that up a little bit more, but this should be alright. Yeah, so tonight we've got to make uh, some cauliflower tacos. I was going, to, I was hoping to do fish tacos, but we all know how that went today. So I figured I'd just uh, do cauliflower, bring the cauliflower just in case. So I'm very glad I did. I'm just going to mix this through. Need a bit more oil. So I've never cooked this in the bush before, so we'll see how we go. When I cook it at home, it's delicious, but <laughs> we'll see how we go here. So you always want to kind of mix that all around. So it's a little bit hard in the pan. It'd be nice to have a bowl out here, but I don't have a bowl. So just let that cook for a little bit, and uh, yeah, we'll come back to it. Oh man, this fire's roaring. But yeah, I think that cauliflower's pretty much done now, so we'll take that off the heat. All right, so in here, we've got the flour tortillas. Seem to stay pretty fresh, which is good. I kept them in a paper bag just to try and keep them as fresh as possible. That wind, that is a nightmare. Same thing happened last, <laughs> so literally last trip I came here, I was trying to make this same dish last trip and I had to call it quits because the wind got too severe. So I don't know what it is with uh, yeah, this meal and the wind, but it seems to not like it. All right, anyway, so we've got, so we've got that. So let's uh, get some avocado on it. Well, I may as well use pretty much all the avocado because otherwise it's going to be a bit of a mess to get back home. So let's just chuck that whole half on. I've got another tortilla as well, so we'll save the other half for that. There we go. Yeah, cool. So then we've got uh, the cauliflower. So we'll just pop that on top. Yeah, it's so like I said, I wanted to use fish. At home, we either usually have uh, cauliflower tacos or fish tacos. Uh, the fish is really nice. So I was hoping to catch some fresh fish, but Unfortunately, that didn't go to plan. So we've got this, but it's still going to be really nice. You can also, yeah, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, you could use cauliflower and chickpeas. That really fills it out, so that's quite nice as well. Let me just add some some uh, coleslaw, but without the, the the mayonnaise. So just coleslaw mix. This might be a little bit too much. And for the, the secret sauce. So this one night in Mexico, smoky chipotle is delicious. Really, really nice. Goes really well with this. So put some of that on. For the final ingredient. Oh, this is not the best knife to cut this. I don't want to use my um yeah, my actual bushcraft knife because I've cut a lemon before with that, and because it's a carbon steel blade, it just just like it just I don't know, it gives it a real weird patina. I don't really like it, so I'd rather not cut it with that if I can avoid it. And finally, some lime. And there you have it, cauliflower tacos. So. Definitely worth giving this a try at home, guys, or even next time camping. It's actually really simple to make here, right? Uh, yeah, the only annoying thing to bring in was basically this sauce, but you could put that in a small container. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, pretty simple. So, bon appetit, let's get stuck into it. Whoa, all right, almost forgot the samp fire that I 
uh, pick this afternoon. So let's chuck some of that in there, I reckon. Might give a bit of a sort of a salty, uh, yeah, salty garnish. All right, sweet. Let's get stuck into it. Man, this looks real tasty, eh? It's one good thing about this meal is it looks really nice. <laughs> Very colorful and fresh. Oh, actually, this bread's not really holding up the best for me, but, oh no. Damn it. Yeah, this bread's falling apart a bit, but let's just give it a go. Yummo. Yeah. I always have this problem with tortillas. When you bring them camping, they always, yeah, they can't stay fresh and they always fall apart. It's the biggest issue. But man, it's so tasty. So, so tasty. Even the samphire, it's actually a nice little touch to it. I've never had samphire before. I mean, I remember reading about it in the book, and then when I was paddling around today, I um, actually came across it and I was like, remembered, remembered reading about it. So, yeah, pretty surprised with it. It'd actually be really good to put in like salads and things like that, I reckon. But yeah, nice. Alright, I'm not gonna eat and talk, so I'll finish these off and I'll get back to you guys before I go to bed. Alright, now for the good stuff. Got some gin. a little bit of a heavy pour, but... And then some tonic. And then to finish it off, some lime. Oh, <laughs> bit of a squirter. Yeah, cheers guys. good. Actually, here's a fun little fact for you guys. I cannot have two gins without falling asleep. It's the weirdest thing, eh? My girlfriend thinks it's so funny. Like, we were to sit down on a Friday night and watch a movie. By the time I finish my second gin, I'll be out like a light. Strangest thing. Like, even tonight, if I was to have my second gin, I guarantee you I'll fall asleep by this fire. It's happened so many times before. I sort of wake up at like one o'clock and there'll just be the embers left and <laughs> I have to put myself to bed. So strange. Doesn't happen with any other alcohol, just uh, with gin. So maybe I'm just a bit of a heavy pourer, who knows. Anyway, I feel like um, I've been talking to the camera an awful lot today. It's been a pretty big day, so pretty keen to wrap it up and call it quits. And yeah, go to bed pretty soon, because I'm pretty tired. So yeah, anyway, I'll um, see you guys in the morning.
Good morning guys, yeah, I woke up to a beautiful morning this morning, it was such a lovely day, I can't believe how lucky I got with the weather this weekend, like I said I thought it was meant to sort of rain slash um, storm yesterday so I got pretty lucky, I'm very glad. Yeah last night was a really nice night's sleep, uh, the mozzies weren't as bad as the night before which is good, maybe that wind that sort of kicked up um, yesterday Arvo might have sort of sent them packing for a bit, but, so it was pretty good. Did wake up a few times to a couple here and there, but nothing too bad. But then this morning, as soon as the sun started to come up, they were back in full force again. Yeah, definitely glad I bought the area guard this time because I would have, otherwise it would have been a pretty horrible um, experience. But yeah, anyway, I've just cooked up some brekkie uh, and just let the fire die out because uh, it's about quarter past eight or 8.30. So I've got to pack up and go pretty soon. Like I said, I've got to go meet my girlfriend, Laura, at um, yeah wedding reception venue. We were looking at it about lunchtime, so yeah, got to pack this down, then paddle back, and then drive up to the spot that we're going to. So yeah, got to get a bit of a wriggle on, I think. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'll um, finish this off, get this packed down, and I'll chat to you guys before I leave. You just want to pour a fair bit of water on it just mix it around so you make like a big slurry just to make sure that everything's well and truly out yeah so that's completely cool to touch so yeah i'll just cover that back up
an old cold and draft can. Gosh, this must be heaps old. These cans were back in like the 70s, 80s. Just goes to show how long some how long rubbish can sit in the environment for. Yeah, so these are just a few things I found lying around here. So I'm a firm believer in sort of uh, leaving a place better than you found it. So if you see some rubbish, just pick it up. It takes two seconds and uh, otherwise it's going to sit in the environment for decades or even centuries. Uh, there's actually a great, uh, a great little movement called Take Three for the Sea. So the idea is basically every time you leave a beach or a public place, just take three pieces of rubbish with you and just imagine how much cleaner the world would be if everyone just did that. Every time you go somewhere, just pick up a few bits of rubbish and it makes the world a difference. Because yeah, too often you just get people walking straight past rubbish and they're like, if everyone does that, it's never going to be cleaned up. So yeah, I think it's a pretty important thing to try and instill into people. So yeah. All right, well, everything's packed up. I've just had a look around just to make sure I haven't forgotten anything or left anything behind. As you can see, the fire's been well and truly put out and covered back up, so it looks like no one was here. Leave no trace. All right, guys, well, I think that's me done for the trip. Really, really enjoyed this weekend. Had such a great time. Such a lovely place to come and camp. A little bit of a shame we couldn't catch any fish yesterday, but I think we've all come to realize that I'm a much better bushman than I am a fisherman. So, yeah, just give me time, I'll eventually get there. Um, yeah, as always, like, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, if you could subscribe, that would really help me out. So, yeah, anyway, until next time, guys. Hooroo.